What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Stocks by the Numbers, and today I am bringing you something a little bit different, which is why I have now separated myself from the rest of the pack. We are talking about the cream of the crop, the, and I rise to the top. I am top five dead or alive. It is because I bring you companies like this. CBOE Global Markets, Inc., right? Ticker symbol, incidentally, CBOE. That stands for the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. Now, this company basically makes its revenue off of the volume of options on their platform, right? So first of all, a lot of people don't even know that these companies trade public, right? That's why I'm just so damn awesome. And if you come down here, you can see there's also the CME, you have the Intercontinental Exchange, ticker symbol ICE, right? There's a handful of exchanges that are publicly traded. And this company, 125 and a half, down a little over 1% here on the day. We have a 52-week low of 103.82, 52-week high of 130.87. So not the biggest range we've seen, but not the tightest as well. We have a market cap of about 13.3 billion, all right? Uh, put that on the back burner. We'll come back to that in a second. We have a beta of 0.57. So a beta, quickly to review, is the volatility of a stock, uh, in relation to the overall volatility of the market. So technically, beta 0.57 means on paper, this stock is about half as volatile as the overall market. The one metric that I am worried about here is the PE here, trading 56 times earnings, but they are earning two and a quarter per share. They're paying you $2 a share to own it, and it's a little over 1.5% yield. But this company... Coming down here, looking at some of the numbers, right? Good EPS beats, rough quarter in Q2 2022, but you know, then a phenomenal bounce back there Q3. And if we switch quarterly, you can see this was the big drop here in earnings. However, look at the revenue: 866 million, 974 million, 985 million, 993 million. Right? So trending in the right direction. And annually, we can see the revenue drops from 2.77 billion to 2.5 billion in 2019. And then what happens? Pandemic, everyone's locked down, give a bunch of young people money. And what do they do with it? They buy stock options. Boom. Revenue jumps up to 3.43 billion last year, 3.49 billion. So this company now, 3.5 billion, right? Last year in revenue. 13.3 billion market cap. So they're training like four times last year's revenue, which if you watch the channel, isn't a crazy multiple. Problem, 56 PE, right? So it, it could come down, but also it's a buy, but also it should come down. If, if any of that made any sense to you guys, right? So we switch over here to... Where are we? Well, we're looking at trading view. And if we come up here, I just wanted to show you guys the earnings real quick, right? You pull up like a one-year chart, you start scrolling back. We can see a heck of a lot more green than red, right? So almost reminds me of something as consistent and stable as uh, an American Express. Symbol AXP did a video on it a while back and basically said the same thing, right? The numbers looked healthy, but more importantly, they had like an 85 or a 90% success rate of beating earnings estimates. And that's what we're seeing here, right? We go back again. This was our uh, Q2 22 uh, EPS miss. But look, top, you know, just beats, 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 slight miss on the EPS, uh, beats, slight miss on the revenue side. Look at that by only a couple of hundred thousand. Beats, 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 beats. And also the dividend keeps increasing, right? Look at this, 27, 36, 42, 48. Now we're up to 50. So that's why if you bought this like five, six, seven years ago, you know, your um, principal investment may have close to doubled and your dividend has now doubled, right? So... You're kind of getting the, the best of both worlds there. And if we look here, long-term chart here, this is an all chart. And we can see that this entire company is almost in a giant ascending triangle, which technically is a, a bullish indicator that this company will, chances are, break above this trend line and make new highs. Now, obviously, these patterns are not set in stone. However, this low right here, as we can see, is like 106, 107 and change, right? Keep that number in mind. But if we break, if we come down to this low, 
and that apparently is our most attractive entry. We'll call it 107, 108. If we can rebound and break through and jump up to the next fib of 149, 150, obviously, you're going to be up almost 50%. And, um, you know, you're, you're going to be having a good time. So that might be your best entry right there, the bottom of this trend line, if it continues, if it doesn't break that pattern. But if we switch over here to stock charts, uh, we can see that, again, this 50-day moving average was, uh, what, 113? Now it's 124 on the daily. We had a 200-day moving average, 118. Now it's at 117.73, right? Not, not much motion. Uh, however, it does look like the MACD is potentially uh, turning downward, so we might begin to pull back here to these levels. But if we switch over here to the weekly, up, oh, look at that. The 200-day moving average slightly increasing from uh, over time from 95, 96, now at 107, 06. Come back here. We come down here. Look at that, 106, 107 and change, right? So that, in my opinion would be perfect because as we see for the last like 20 22 months or whatever it's been the company has been fighting to get above this 200 day moving average rejecting a bunch of times and then breaking above and using it and bouncing off of support on at least two or three different occasions and has now stayed well above that moving average so this is going to be our support line if it drops to 107 number one in my opinion obviously definitely more attractive at 107 than 125, right? If it looks good at this level, if it drops to 107, we just say thank you, scoop up shares, and move forward. If it breaks this, it will obviously kind of break out of this pattern and kind of void this whole situation. However, if it does break, again, then the company is now only trading, uh, what, like two and a half, three times total revenue. The PE will drop from uh, 56 to what, like 40 or 38 or something like that. Wait, no, two and a quarter, 40 times that is uh, $90, right? So 90 will be a 40 PE. This does seem a little low. I don't know if it'll get this low anytime soon. But again, the 107 mark is the one you want to keep an eye on. And if it does happen to break and go into the low hundreds, it might, you know, be a little fluke where it drops down and then spikes immediately right back up and, you know, reclaims itself, which is fine. We've seen that happen. But again, 107 in my eyes would be a great entry. And 105, 103, if it does happen to pull back, in my opinion, I would be all over it. We went we went over the numbers. You know, they look phenomenal. They look consistent. They look healthy. And, you know, overall, uh, I'm pretty much going to leave it there because there's not much to talk about. Again, over the years, yeah, the profit margin slightly pulling back, look at like a third of a percent, one percent, and then rebounding from 13.6% to 15%. I mean, the, the company is really doing well, but again, 56, 57 PE, we could potentially wait for something a little bit more attractive. You know, looking at the PE over time in the 20s and 30s, now it's 57. Let's wait for a pullback. You know, price of sales three and a half, not too crazy historically. Um, almost 20 times cash flow, uh, trading 4.1 times book value, which isn't too crazy. I, you know, we have seen lower, but we've also seen significantly higher. And, you know, going into the profitability ratios, Again, yes, you can say that some of them have decreased compared to last year. Looking at their, uh, excuse me, looking at their current values, right? But also at the same time, remember the company's overall business is basically based off of options volume, which we looked at the article before. They're rocking and rolling, right? So this is why CBOE, you know. Uh, again, if we come down here, uh, where was it? Here we go. Trading volume again. Look, you know, this is showing again, volume for November of 22 volume for November of 2021. And you can see slight declines right in the futures, 22% drop Japanese equities, flat Australian equities down 8%. And you know, you have index options up 50% year over year, Canadian equities up over 200% year over year. So that's why any slight decrease is basically the money was just repositioned into, the, you know, two or three other specific sectors. 
And again, coming down here, you know, just, just multiple bullet points, uh, multiple benchmarks for the company, total options volume reach an all-time high with 300 million contracts. That's what I'm saying. If options volume is up at all-time highs and they make money off of options volume, then, uh, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. You do not need to be a rocket scientist, so to speak, to see the big picture and see what's really going on here. But hey, listen, I'm going to end it there. Um, so once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Just like everyone on YouTube says, if, um, if you like the channel, give it a thumbs up. Helps out the algorithm. If you like the channel and the videos, subscribe. Uh, that means a lot to me. But more importantly, you know, like I always say, I understand markets are rocky and volatile and uncertain. And I just wish that everyone this year, you know, didn't get too stressed out. And, you know, you guys are ready to celebrate New Year's, but, you know, be safe, be healthy, be happy, and, um, you know, get ready for a decent 2023, because I do have a feeling that anyone who hit a rough patch here, you know, you can always turn it around. You just, you just have to be patient and, you know, just absorb as much knowledge as you can and just make a better decision moving forward. But, um... You know, I want to say I started the channel like seven months ago. You know, you guys have been awesome, you know, just day in, day out. And, um, you know, definitely giving me the motivation to continue to jump on here and make a, vi a video a day, two videos a day, one video a week, you know, wh whenever I can get to it. You know, I'm, I'm always thinking about you guys because you showed me the support. So now I have to support you back. And, uh, you know, try to bring you these videos as often as I can. You guys have seen I started my own new series, Holding My Own Feet to the Fire. Um, you know, that, that that's what a real investor does. Uh, you know, we, we go back six, seven months and we look at the call I made and how it's been performing. If I was right, if I got something wrong. And, again, it's not necessarily about... Oh, I'm right, you know, 88% of the time, or you know, whatever the heck. But it's more about, you know, where did we go wrong? How did we read it incorrectly? How can we change that moving forward, right? Because like they say, if you don't learn from your mistakes, then you're just being silly, you know? So that's why I'm sure you guys appreciate the fact that I started that series. I actually have the guts to... Uh, review companies you know because some people they'll they'll make a video about a stock if it doesn't work out they'll just blame the market or you know they won't want to uh, address it and they'll just want to move on to the to the next uh, recommendation or next uh, analytical video that they made and no you know it's like you know if i come out if i say like oh yeah this is a five dollar stock and it you know gets to five dollars yeah hey i got it right if it you know gets bought out and shoots up to $15 and it's like poof you know completely got this one wrong and you know we're gonna have to tread a little lighter you know moving forward into the next situation so like they say you live and you learn but again I know you guys appreciate how honest I am how straightforward and, and upfront I am with everything and again the fact that you know we're double checking we're going back and we're actually seeing how successful we are here on this channel so win loser draw off I, I know it's a positive. So again, thank you guys for stopping by. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and this community. And, you know, uh, again, I hope everyone has a happy and healthy new year. I want everyone to be safe. And I'll see you guys in 2023. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.